All right, we're just going to give everyone just a, a moment or two to kind of drop in and check that. All you folks waiting, all you one persons out there waiting for us, welcome to Tech Art Talk Live. I don't know why I'm being quiet. I'm just waiting here for folks to drop in. everything is going going okay so we've got this going so let's get this show on the road all right welcome tech artists from around the world it is 12 30 it is friday and that means it's time for another episode of tech art talk live now i know we've been dealing with the last couple weeks with cool stuff like ray marching and so forth and I promised you that I was gonna go into and teach all you folks HLSL programming <laughs> okay but before we go into going on to that I wanted to share with you something that I recently encountered and um, a book that I read just recently I thought was very inspirational and I thought it particularly applied to technical artists and that's what I wanted to go over today's lecture because today's lecture isn't going to be very demonstrational it's going to be mostly me lecturing so it's not going to be terribly long and I'm going to get firing through all of these slides really really quick and so it let's get things going with the today's presentation all right now a lot of you may have saw the get naked neon sign that I used to kind of entice people to come in here and that's what today's lecture is all about is getting naked and this is kind of like a little bit to the rainbow rules now if you've been a fan of tech art talk live you're kind of familiar with the rainbow rules and those are these are the rules for social etiquette that technical artists have to do in order to become good technical artists and have people want to keep them hiring and getting naked is a little bit like that because getting naked is a book that's written by Patrick Lencioni. Now, please don't come at me with knives and pitchforks if I misspell that. I think it's spelled Lencioni. I think that's how you pronounce his name. But anyway, he wrote this book and he originally geared it towards the consulting industry. And uh, I was reading it and I was like, okay, this is very nice. Actually, it's a really good read. If you're looking for a good book to get, you know, go ahead and get the Get Naked book. It's really actually very interesting. But it, he developed it for client services, anything, anything that will devote for servicing clients. And then I was reading this and was wondering, hmm, you know, tech artists really are service oriented. We, we knew that from dealing with the tech art golden rules and so forth, but really, tech artists are the, are the folks that dive in there and they really get stuff done. They're the ones who dive into the burning buildings and they save productions. They help out the artists. They work with the producers. They, they uh, complement the programmers. So they really are the service, program, uh, the, the service providers of the, of the development process. Okay. Now, there's a lot of times here we do talk about clients because remember this book was written about clients and that is folks becoming uh, consultants and then they serve their clients and they try to help and solve their clients' problems. So therefore, who are the tech artists' clients? Well, first, of all, first and foremost they are the artists. They are their uh, number one clients, and so those are usually the folks that we've got to serve first and foremost. And then we have the producers, and the producers are, you know, they are developing, putting in assets, creating, uh, designing, putting together the game, designing stuff, and they say they got to work with the art assets too, so the tech artists have got to serve them. And of course the programmers, because quite often they're developing the tools, they're developing the infrastructure, and they need to work with the art in order to understand like are they dealing with the art pipeline properly and so tech artists have got to do, work hard to service them so in general tech artists have to serve the entire company so these the artists the producers the programmers the company these are all concerned you know concerns about who are the tech artists clients and so let's get talking about 
naked service. Now, naked service as proposed by the book. It's really all about vulnerability. And what does vulnerability mean? It means that they can beat you up? No, 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 no. It means all about coming forth with uncommon levels of humility, you know, uh, not showing off or not bragging too much. <laughs> Selflessness, meaning that it is about other people, not about ourselves. And transparency, meaning that we're open books. You know, we are honest and we say what's on our minds and then we communicate and and help do what it takes in order to get the job done. And so it's all for the good of the client. And who are our clients again? We've got the artists, the producers, the programmers, and the overall company doing what it takes. Now, for a lot of you hearing about this, you're saying, hmm, humility, selflessness, transparency, that equates to suffering. Right. And so it's only human nature to kind of go through and say, okay, I'm going to avoid things of where it exposes my humility and my selflessness and my transparency. I'm going to try to avoid those situations. Why? Well, because they're painful. They're awkward. And they're, they're not fun. It doesn't make the job fun. Okay. The whole point of this is to embrace these and use these as powerful tools for the tech artist in their everyday operations. And so what they all do is they combat the three fears that all tech artists have. And these are the underlying fears that drive tech artists underneath all of the, uh, the running around and the hair pulling. So the first fear is losing the clients. And now from uh, the Getting Naked book, the losing the clients means about making the sale and actually getting the clients on your team. Now, in most facilities, the tech artists already have the artists, the programmers, and the producers already as clients. And so that's already established. So what were we worry about? We're, we're you know, we, we as tech artists, we're worried about losing the artist support. In other words, we're afraid of losing the love. That's right, gang. We all, we, you know, as tech artists, we all know that we love, you know, helping the artists. We love helping the producers and the programmers, and we don't want to lose that love. We don't want to be off by ourselves. You know, there are a few tech artists out there who really strive to be given the world's hardest problem and getting tossed down in the basement, and they lock the doors on us, and they throw us Cheetos and Pepsi until we solve the world's hardest problem. Okay. Most of the time, tech artists are dealing with other people and then helping out. So when we lose the love and nobody will work with us, that kind of feels lonely. <laughs> okay. Fear of doing things that could engender greater loyalty and trust. Okay. By being vulnerable and so forth, this is, you know, very painful. And if we do these things, then it seems, like, at least on the surface, that this could kind of like be counterproductive and I'm telling you it's don't it actually will build greater loyalty and trust and so we as tech artists have got to do what we can to demonstrate to our clients the artists the producers the programmers that we're really most interested in everything else we're most interested in helping them out yes we do have our own projects and we are doing those own projects so we can make our lives easier and help them out in the long run but it's really all about helping them out you know helping out the company in the big time okay artists they can smell fear and so they are very sensitive to it so this is like the number one fear that we've got to watch out for so what's the number two fear and that's being embarrassed well this seems like a no-brainer but tech artists are really more sensitive about this more than others okay admittedly no one likes being wrong you know but really, being wrong is better than not saying anything where something really need to be said. And so when they say, hey, dude, you know, you knew that the fire was burning. Why didn't you say anything? You know, not saying anything is actually can, can be actually worse. So it all comes down to pride. Okay, I've mentioned this before multiple times. We as tech artists have got to put down that pride. We've got to don't worry about looking smart and competent. Okay. We, being smart, being competent, seems like what we want to know about. It's not, tech, being a tech artist isn't about being smart, about being competent. It's doing what it takes to get the job done. So go ahead, ask the dumb questions. We'll get more into this later, but protecting your intellectual ego 
really is a low priority. You got to really get out there. Now you can see where this is starting to get into the whole getting naked business. Okay, be suggestive and transparent. Now these are more attractive than intelligence. So, but you do have to. We do have to watch out. We as tech artists are very good at being suggestive and transparent at times and almost too good. And so you want to avoid being obtuse and you want to avoid being obnoxious. So remember, asking questions is the tech artist's greatest tool. And so that will empower the tech artist to be suggestive and transparent without having to worry about being obnoxious and coming across like a real a-hole. Okay, what's the third fear? The third fear is feeling inferior. That's right. Fear, you know, tech artists all, they, they want to be loved. You know, they want to be appreciated. And when they're feeling inferior, well, then that doesn't happen. So we as tech artists, we're concerned about feeling inferior. Okay, we got to worry about, remember that tech artists, we're support folks. We're here to help and get everyone going. And we are here, we are subservient, not only to the artists and to the producers and to the programmers, but to the whole company and to the project that we're working on. We're going to do what it takes to get that project done. And so the tech artists have got to put themselves in lower positions. We've got to do some of the grunt work. You know, sometimes we've got to clean the toilets. You've got to do whatever we got to do in order to help the client. In other words, a tech artist does whatever needs to be done in order to get those assets into the game or deliver those assets into the film. We've got to do what we can to, to just get those suckers in there. But we have to be willing and we've got to be cheerful to set our ego aside. Here it is, the ego getting in the way again. Here our pride. We've got to make sure that we demonstrating that the other's needs are more important than our own. Why? It's because we have asbestos underwear. We'll get into that a little later, but remember, asbestos underwear is what we tech artists have. Okay, so here are some techniques that we're gonna be going into, you know, kind of like helping out that, and a few guidelines in order to help combat these three fears. Okay, serving instead of selling. Once again, I was walking about, this is book was originally written for consultants who actually tried to go out and get clients. If you're in a facility and you're working for a development company, you probably already don't have to worry about getting any more clients. They're yours. But you want to keep your clients. You want to keep your artists and your programmers and your producers happy. You want them to love you, right? So don't worry about the appreciation. Now this is where the weird part is. This is what we're all worried about. and This is what we really want. We want to be appreciated, but do what you can to do it. So for everyone who's going to take advantage of our generosity, who's going to be obnoxious, there's at least nine of us who actually do appreciate this. And when you think about this, it's really true. Because the ones who do take advantage of us, you know, they sting. But then you have to realize that there are, are a whole bunch of other folks who really do appreciate it. And we've got to remember those. Tell the kind truth. All right. This is where asking questions come in because we as tech artists, and I am certainly no uh, special exception. I tend to be kind of obnoxious. I tend to be kind of a dick at times, you know, trying to get my point of route. So you, but you do have to confront your clients with difficult messages. But you got to do it with dignity and humanity. This is the important part here, folks. You know, sometimes tech artists are very happy delivering these difficult messages, you know, just because they're frustrated but we've got to do it with dignity and humanity. So instead of being blunt, show kindness, empathy, and respect. And don't be obnoxious. Yeah, remember, if, you've, if you feel in the urge <laughs> to being blunt and being obnoxious, just default to asking questions. And what's most important is don't sugarcoat the severity. If the thing is really an issue and if it's a real big problem do not mean that okay okay even if this ultimately means you being removed from the project being removed from the company do whatever you case if you see the elephant in the room say hey dude there's an elephant in the room because most probably that's not an elephant it's actually like a fire breathing tusk tooth mastodon who's ready to go and stomp the crap out of everybody do what it takes to 
present with is the situation. You know, don't worry about being fired. You know, if you do it with dignity and humanity, you're most probably going to get appreciated. It. All right, enter the danger. That's it, folks. We're tech artists. We got to jump into that fire. Don't avoid uncomfortable situations. You know, it seems very tempting, and a lot of folks are uncomfortable with it. But remember, we have asbestos underwear. Dive into that fire. Go right into it. We uh, are protected with asbestos underwear, right? We know that our vitals and our good parts aren't going to get singed. So go ahead, dive into that fire. That's what we're there for. That's why we get paid the big bucks, right? You got to avoid, you got to dive into those dangerous situations because ultimately they build value and trust. And then you got to admit it when something else, when something is obviously not clear. You know, when somebody kind of assumes that something is understood and it's not clear, well, then you got to go get it, admit to the folks that, hey, wait a second, bub. If it's not clear for me, then it's not clear for other people's as well. So this is where you got to really jump into those uncomfortable situations. Now, similar to this is that we got to ask dumb questions. Yeah, I know. We're asking questions a lot, but don't be afraid to ask those dumb questions. Okay. If we ask those dumb questions that other folks are afraid to ask, well then we're going to be appreciated for it. Because remember, for every five dumb questions that we ask, we know that there are going to be two, actually two questions in there that actually be pretty insightful and they're going to far outweigh the, the impact of the three dumb suggestions. You know, go forth, ask the questions that seem too obvious to ask because ultimately, once again, if we're not asking those questions, then that means that other people are too afraid of looking dumb or they're afraid of putting their hand into the fire. Other people are going to be respectful and they're going to be thankful that the tech, we as the tech artists had the cojones to jump into there and jump into the fire and ask that dumb questions. And speaking of dumbness, go ahead, make those dumb suggestions. We got to do that. That is our job. Our clients do remember when we have the good ideas and they're going to forget when we had the lesser good ideas because ultimately when tech artists make really good suggestions even though they're dumb they all comes out with making more money it usually has to do with the ROI remember that folks when tech artists are driving that ROI they are treated like heroes and remember if the clients feel like we're holding back to avoid embarrassment or it's too dangerous or something then they're gonna feel like they're cheating they're going to feel like, hey, you know, we want this, we're, you know, we've got this tech artist. They're, 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 this tech artist is supposed to be like a superhero, and they're kind of like being behaving like a toddler. You know, what's the deal? Okay, you know, we fe they feel like, you know, hey, we're not supporting them. Okay, so without the risk of being dumb, go ahead and put out those suggestions out there. Because if you're not putting out lots of ideas, the ideas that are really, really brilliant will never get the opportunity of being born. Okay, now when you're thrown out there, you're gonna make mistakes. Some of the some of the some of the questions you ask are gonna be dumb, and some of the uh, suggestions that you make are gonna be dumb. But and you're gonna make other mistakes somewhere along the line. You know, it's it's, it's just inevitable. So when it happens. Go ahead, call out those errors, and be responsible. You know, everybody knows that you know tech artists are not perfect, and they're, but they are. They're, you're not expected to be perfect. You're not expected to be brilliant, but you are expected, and you are being paid to be honest and transparent. So remember that. So go ahead, and when the errors do happen, and when you make mistakes, call them out and be responsible for them. Okay. Now here is an interesting. Uh, little tidbit here you gotta be willing to take a bullet for the client okay so that does not mean that you empower the client to do something wrong and then we absorb the blame like uh, you know that the uh, that someone chooses to do something wrong and uh, uh, they like they choose to change an asset when they weren't supposed to and you know you knew they were they weren't supposed to and you know that changing the asset was supposed to be a bad idea and then they went and had it did it and then you would then you go and you take a, 
account for that or if you assume the blame. No, don't do that. But what you got to do is you got to suffer the situation so your clients won't have to. So what are the means is you got to do what it takes. Now, if there is something that you can kind of step in, they understand that the tech artists aren't perfect. So if there's an opportunity to take the heat so or to take the blame so that your artists don't have to, yeah, go ahead and do it. Always err on the side of accepting responsibility. When you're doing that, you're going to gain the loyalty and the trust of your artists. You're going to gain the loyalty and trust of the company. When they realize that you're taking the bullet for them, you know, they appreciate it. Now, a, a situation like this just happened yesterday, and I realized, to make a long story short, none of the artists were saving their stuff to their, they weren't pushing it up to the rev revision control. And so the revision control was, rag, you know, directly behind. And the artists, you know, they don't like to use Perforce. And so uh, they reluctantly do it. And so instead of, like, having them take the blame, I admitted to take the blame for them and say, yes, okay, it's true. You know, I didn't chase after the artists, and I wasn't cleaning out after them. And in fact, I'm building a tool right now that will alleviate the artist from ever having to do that again. So therefore, what I did was I, I took the bullet for my artists. You know, I said, okay, yeah, I know that this is a problem, but it's my responsibility because I didn't chase after them, and I didn't enforce it. And I'm building a tool now that will prevent that from ever happening again. See, that's how you take the bullet for your client. Okay, make everything about the client. Remember, we as tech artists, we have a little bit of a superhero complex, but we gotta make it all about the artists. We gotta make it about the producers and the programmers. Instead of focusing on our greatness, we've got to focus in on honoring and understanding and supporting the client's work. That means we've gotta uh, go out there and push the artists you know, higher above ourselves. We've got to promote those programmers and and designers. We've got to do what they can to kind of like let them shine in order for the whole project to shine. Okay, we also have to client the owner's work. We have to take an interest in their business and appreciate the importance of their work to the team and company. So what that means is ultimately, so suppose you're working on a game that you're really not too excited about. You know, you know let's just say that you're not you know, dealing, you're not too excited about worry, worrying about little trolls playing around on the back of unicorns' manes and then combing their hair. You know, there's other things that we'd rather be working on. But that doesn't mean that we have to be obnoxious about it. We've got to find interest. We've got to find ways that we can develop and demonstrate and kind of foster the creative process so we're supporting what the artists are doing so that we can keep them excited about what there's going on and we can bring everything up. Remember, I always said that you had to work on, you know, in the film world, I always said that you have to work on 12 Deuce Bigelows before working on one Titanic. And that is true. So you got to, every project you find, you got to find some way of loving. And you got to find some way of, of finding the great elements of that so you can support your artists so they can do the best work possible. And sometimes that means doing the dirty work. Okay. Technical artists are willing to do anything and everything to deliver the team's art. You know, that's right, folks. We've got to do whatever it is, and it's even beneath us. You know, this combats the whole inferiority thing, but we got to do whatever it takes to get that job done. And what this does, this just shows that we are dedicated to the team and to the organization, and we're dedicated to the project, and we're dedicated, dedicated to the company. So get out there and do those things, even when we think that we shouldn't be doing them. Okay, once again, this is a little bit like making errors, but admit weaknesses and limitations. Now, this is a little bit different. Uh, so that's one thing to be honest about a mistake, but it's far different to admit a weakness. Okay, now, I don't want you to use your weaknesses, if you don't know how to do something, as a crutch. That is not what you're supposed to be doing. But let's just suppose that um, you wanted to go and be the lead on something. And if you wanted to go and let's just say uh, program, uh, create a new tool, but it had to be using 
Pi QT. And you happen to know that Pi QT isn't something you really f focused on, and you kind of flunked that section in tech art school, and but you knew that this other tech artist really knew Pi QT very well. You might want to say, hey, you know, I really want to help this problem, but I really feel this other artist, they know Pi QT far better than I do, and they're going to be able to do a much better job with that. But don't use that as a crutch to say, oh, well, I don't know Pi QT, so I'm not going to do that problem. No, if no one around is better to do it, then that means that's right, folks, you got to do it. So don't ever enter a situation that you can't handle to be a, to be expected at at a certain level. So don't be somebody who you are not. Be in, be in the situation of where you can actually shine. If you're busy trying to do things that you can't actually do or you're not very good at, then basically what's going to happen is that you're going to be spending time doing things where you could be doing things in other areas where you really excel at. And you're going to make more, far more of a difference. And you're going to make more of an impact when you're doing the areas that you can really thrive. And then you're collaborating with other folks who are, happen to be better at you in these other things and then promoting them as well. All right. That is what I wanted to focus on as far as Getting Naked. And the book, Getting Naked, by Patrick Lancioni is a really good one. And I highly advise everyone out there to go ahead and in, when you're in the tech art field or any kind of service area, to go ahead and check it out. It's really a good read. All right, so if you know if you like what you saw today, come on, tune in for Tech Art Talk Live. But we're not going to be on next week. I'm going to be in North Carolina for a wedding, and so we will return back on the 30th of July. Man, can you believe it? The 30th of July already? The end of July? Man, I can't believe it. Man, it just seems like 4th of July was just yesterday, and now we're talking about the end of July. Damn, Tempest Fugit. Okay, and that's when we're going to start going into HLSL basics. I don't know how many lectures this is going to take. I would thought initially it was going to take six lectures, but maybe we're going to get it down to about four or four or five because there are some things that I teach in my robust HLSL class, but I, I don't know how I'm going to teach it to you because they're a little too complicated and they would take too long to program over live. But we'll see what we can do. Okay, next week. Can you believe it? Next week, GDC 21. That's right, folks. Hey, if you happen to be around on the 20th, which is a Tuesday, go check uh, me out at 120 Pacific Standard Time. I, I'm uh, going to be presenting a course on object-oriented Python using Houdini as an IDE. That's right, folks. We're going to be teaching Python, but we're going to use Houdini to do it, and I'm going to express how to do it. If you want to go ahead and check that out, drop in on Tuesday. All right. Very cool. If you like what you saw today, folks, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That's right. Press that little button down in the lower right-hand corner, and go ahead and subscribe to me on YouTube, or my name is Chris Rhoda. Check me out on Facebook and on LinkedIn, or go check out TechRedu also on Facebook and on LinkedIn and find out all about and show us some love that way. Or if you, what you really want to do, if you find yourself over in techartedu.com, which is the website supporting everything TechArt related and techartedu, go ahead and opt in by clicking the little click here now button. And what you do is you're going to give me your, your email address and we're going to update you with the latest articles if we ever write them. <laughs> That's right, folks. We're a little bit behind on writing articles, but that's okay. We're busy finishing books. Yes. Okay. Sorry we're not going to be here next week, but I will see you folks in two weeks where we enter into another rabbit hole of diving into programming in HLSL. All right. Thank you very much for joining me today. We'll see you in two weeks. Arrivederci.